This is a Bubinga bowl blank which I'm uh, mounting on my lathe using a worm screw. I start by truing up the blank and I'm using a 3 8 bowl gouge. This has got a 45 degree bevel um, and a fingernail grind. And I'm just using, doing a push cut here, rubbing the bevel, got running along the outside of the blank just to true it up. Keeping some downward pressure on the tool rest to stop the uh, gouge bouncing. I'm just doing a couple of passes here just to true up the edge. I've now moved the tool rest round and I'm now doing some push cuts around the uh, edge of the bowl here to create the round profile. Just uh, running the bowl gauge round, rubbing the bevel. You can see I'm getting a nice clean cut here, making sure the bowl gauge is very sharp. Now just running across the face, truing up the face a bit with a push cut, rubbing the bevel. Now continuing shaping. Just running round push cuts and now I'm doing a little bit of shear scraping just to uh, round off, get a nice round profile, removing any ridges. Doing a little bit of shear scraping here just to remove the ridges, fine tuning the shape really, using the closed face of the uh, bowl gouge but only using the lower flute. Just doing more refining here, making sure it's a nice smooth curve around. starting to do a bit of work on the base of the bowl here a little bit of um, shear scraping uh, just across there just to make sure that the profile of the bottom is right I'm aiming to get it uh, if anything slightly concave and I'm just checking that with using my uh, bowl gouge as a straight edge doing a push cut here just to correct it slightly getting a nice cleanish cut there but you don't want a convex bottom to a bowl because it won't sit properly. Uh, you want it dead flat or slightly concave. I'm just double checking that, just refining it. I've marked out the bottom of the bowl. Um, to cut the recess for my chuck jaws. I'm just using a very sharp parting tool here just to uh, create that recess. Just uh, going into my mark and uh, moving across the bottom just to remove the bulk of the wood from the recess. Taking off little bites as I go. But make sure your parting tool is nice and sharp. I'm now switching to a skew, a skew chisel that I'm using as a negative rake scraper, just taking gentle cuts, nice sharp skew. I'm just running backwards and forwards across the bottom of the recess to make sure it's dead flat, get rid of any torn grain. And here I'm using the toe of the skew to create a slight undercut to the recess. 
and uh, here I'm just neatening up the uh, foot of the bowl just to make sure it sits properly, just getting rid of a little bit of torn grain that was there. And I've started sanding and uh, using the Simon Hope rotary sanding system. I'm sanding up to 400 grit. You see, I'm getting a nice finish on that. Then applying two coats of sanding sealer. This is cellulose sanding sealer. Thin down a little bit with cellulose thinners. Making sure I'm sealing the grain, sealing up those pores. That, I've let that dry and I'm now using Yorkshire grit abrasive paste on the bowl and I'm working that backwards and forwards across the bowl and into the recess and gradually cleaning it away with a clean cloth. After, you use the same cloth you apply it with to start with and then gradually buff it away. I've now turned the bowl round and I'm mounting it on my chuck jaws, expanding them into the recess to grip it. The first thing I do is just a little bit of shear scraping with the bowl gouge just across the face just to true it up so it's not wobbling at all across the face. Just a little bit of shear scraping just to take the sharp edge off there and now I'm starting hollowing. It's a 3 8 bowl gouge, very sharp and I'm just taking gentle little bites out just to start with rolling it round on the tool rest. Just starting to do some of the hollowing. I'm not hollowing the bowl completely at this stage. I just want to uh, start the hollowing process. The main hollowing will be done at the second stage. Here we go, some nice shavings coming off there. Doing a bit more hollowing. So another quite dusty piece of wood really. Yeah, quite a mixture of dust and shavings when you're doing this. You can see I'm holding the flutes at roughly 45 degrees, so the cutting edge is 45 degrees. I'm just rolling that round the form. So it's following the bevel really. I've sharpened my parting tool and I'm using this now to create the recess to put some brass resin in to create the brass rim to the bowl. So I'm just uh, very carefully working that in. And I'm going in at an angle that's going to roughly follow the contour of the top of the bowl when I finish it. It's probably difficult to see here but the recess is stepped. Uh, the bottom of the recess has got a step in it and it steps down towards the uh, centre of the bowl. So it's at two levels this recess. And that's to uh, give the resin more surface area to bond and resist centrifugal force when I'm turning it once the resin's in there. But I'll put a diagram of this up in a minute and uh, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Sorry about the crude nature of this diagram, but it's a cross section of half the bowl just to try and demonstrate the shape of the recess I've created. We're in out of the workshop now and I'm mixing up some epoxy resin. This is uh, West Systems G-Flex epoxy, it's a slow setting epoxy resin. I'm mixing equal quantities, mixing it thoroughly. I'll then decant a little bit into a separate pot and add some powdered brass and I'm adding roughly about the same volume of brass as resin perhaps a bit more and really you need to add as much brass powder as you can um, 
to get the you want as much brass powder in there as you can but with it still being workable I'm just making sure it's thoroughly mixed in actual fact I made this a little bit too thick this one because it didn't flow terribly well in the bowl so I might end up with some voids but we'll see I'm mixing it really thoroughly well, I then got this giant 50 mil syringe which you can pick up very cheap at times if you shop around on eBay and uh, yeah you can only use them once so I bought a bulk box of them I got I got them very cheap bought them a long time ago now but you can uh, squidge all that in using a lollipop stick or a mixing stick putting that all into the spatula sorry putting all that into the syringe with the spatula Getting the plunger in, and then I'm just uh, squeezing the air out. And it's just a very convenient way of squidging this into the recess, really. This bit took a bit of time, gently squidging it all in. And here it is. The recess is all filled up, and there's a few bubbles coming up, which I get rid of as well, gradually pop those. But I'm then putting some masking tape around the uh, outside, just in case it runs over the edge so I don't really want it setting on my chuck jaws or down the side of the bowl that's finished and I then uh, leave it overnight to set it doesn't need to be left quite that long but might as well I've put the chuck back on the lathe now and uh, I'm starting to shake the outside of the bowl using a 3 8 bowl gouge, it's got 45 degree bevel on it with a fingernail grind. You can see I'm doing some push cuts here, rubbing the bevel as I go, just creating my contour. And as I cut the wood back, you can gradually see the brass resin appearing. So I'm just gradually taking more and more away and just checking my cuts. You can see I've got a lovely smooth finish on that. But nice uh, sharp bowl gouge does the job. You can see the brass there's appeared, and there should be a good sharp line uh, where the bottom of the recess was that I created. Just contouring round, checking my cuts again. There's a little bit of porosity on the edge of the. Uh, brass resin there where it meets the wood but just taking one more cut gets rid of most of that so I've got a nice clean line now so where there was a sharp line angle there was a little bit of air trapped I'm just gradually taking very fine cuts I don't want to overcut this little push cuts going downhill with the grain turning the uh, lathe off to move the tool rest round. Here I'm doing a bit of shear scraping using the lower edge of the um, the lower flute of the bowl gouge. Just refining the shape, removing any ridges. Making sure I don't catch the top edge of the bowl gouge. I'm now doing a bit of shear scraping just across the rim of the bowl just to make sure that's true and yeah, running nicely. Gives me a nice basis to start hollowing. Just making sure that we're all running true. I'm finishing or starting the 
hollowing here. I'd already started it before I put the brass resin in, but I'm starting the actual final stage of the hollowing. Just doing some uh, little push cuts with the 3 8 bowl gouge, angling the uh, riding the bevel but angling the flutes at 45 degrees. Just following the contour of the bowl round. Nice sharp bowl gouge, you can see the uh, shavings that are coming off. Just gradually taking gentle cuts, getting deeper and deeper, going across the bottom. Changed the camera angle here, but everything was getting a bit dusty. You can just see as I'm running down the side, the inside edge of the bowl, and that's the brass appearing there. You can just see the shavings change, and that's just as I expose the brass resin. A little bit of sheer scraping just on the edge. A bit more hollowing here. You can't quite see me going across the bottom, but just taking little bites. You want to avoid taking too big a bite each time because otherwise the nose of the um, bowl gouge can dig in and you'll get a catch. Clearing the shavings. I've got the bowl, uh, the tool rest angled into the mouth of the bowl there. But it does trap the shavings a little bit. You can see the uh, shavings collecting up here as I'm going around. They build up with the uh, the tool rest inside the bowl like that. And with these enclosed bowls where you've got a concavity, the uh, shavings don't shed quite so well, so you do have to clear them every so often. Looks a bit like tobacco, the way this is uh, coming off the inside of the bowl. These are the last few um, passes with the bowl gouge, just uh, getting the final shape of the inside. I then uh, switched tool rest to a um, box scraper rest, the Robert Sorby scraper rest. Um, and this is a flat rest that uh, essentially is, is designed for hollowing um, lidded boxes and things uh, so that you can get the tools right inside. Uh, but it does work very well for these small enclosed bowls. And you uh, have it so that the cutting edge of the scraper is just above centre. And you keep it as tight into the edge as possible. And I'm using a heavy duty bowl scraper to start with just to smooth out the contours. Here I switch to a Robert Sorby hardwood scraper which is a negative rake scraper. And I'm running that across the top of the um, scraper rest. You have to be very careful doing this, there's nowhere for the uh, tool to go if you get a catch, so you must do it very gently. Make sure your tools are very sharp, you've got a nice burr on your scraper. And do very gentle cuts, no big bites, just gentle cuts moving backwards and forwards, keeping the tool flat onto the scraper rest. It's a very effective tool, the scraper rest. Uh, with the negative rake scraper, you get a fantastic finish. There was absolutely minimal um, tear out on that. Really nice finish. 
I did sharpen it a couple of times. I'm just doing very gentle cuts, sweeping side to side. Uh, it gave a really good finish. I'm now just contouring the brass rim using the uh, hardwood scraper which as I said is a negative rake scraper just taking really light cuts it's very easy to overcut this resin uh, it does cut very nicely I'm taking very gentle cuts just to get rid of that square edge and give it a more rounded contour just clearing a few of the uh, shavings I'm now using my Simon Hope sanding system to sand the outside of the bowl to 400. Making sure I remove any uh, tool marks and scratches from previous grits. And uh, making sure it's lovely and smooth contour there. Working it backwards and forwards. I've slowed the lathe up a little bit just to do this. I'm then switching to power sanding the inside, sanding that up to 400 again. Slowed the lathe up even further to do this, just to stop it clattering around inside. And I've now applied two coats of sanding sealer, and I'm just de nibbing with a, a, a bit of abrasive pad. Then it's my good old Yorkshire grit, putting that on, nice generous coat of that. Work it all over the surface with the lathe stationery. Then uh, turning the lathe on and working the Yorkshire grit backwards and forwards across the surface. And it gets finer and finer and gives you a finer and finer finish. It's fantastic stuff, saves an awful lot of dust, saves an awful lot of time. So I'm using the same bit of cloth that I applied it with and I'm just working it and working it and working it backwards and forwards across the surface. You can see the uh, brass in the resin starts to shine. Once the Yorkshire grit's done its job, you gradually buff it away with clean cloths, and that gives it the final sort of luster. But it's come up very nicely. I just finished it off with some wax. Hello, folks. Welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. Just come in from the workshop. I've finished my latest project, which is this boobinger bowl with a brass rim or brim, and I did the. Uh, did that with epoxy resin with brass powder in and uh, it's come out well it's an experiment not done this before and as you can see it looks looks all right very pleased with that uh, the only thing that I don't like is a bit of porosity in the resin um, difficult to uh, Yeah, if you, really you need a pressure pot to um, compress the air out of the resin if you're going to do this. Uh, you cannot use vacuum um, 
to degas this, not when it's in the wood, because you actually draw more air out of the wood and into the resin and you'll create porosity. But if you had a big enough pressure pot and could put this in a pressure pot, it would compress the air and get rid of those bubbles. But I'm very pleased with that as an experiment. It's worked very well. Thank you very much to all my subscribers and all the lovely comments from all over the world. I really appreciate it. Hopefully I've replied to all the comments. Uh, I try to. Um, there we go. Well, please like, share and subscribe. There'll be more videos coming soon.